Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Probably the most fun section, I think, in the trig stuff is trig identities. At least it is for me. Some people hate them. I love them. I think they're a hoot. Whoops. Sorry, I'm erasing over here. All right. So all that an identity is, is if I can make two things equal each other, all right? If I can make A equal B, then they are identical to one another, all right? Nothing to it. So I'm going to give you some tools. I'm going to give you some skills that you already know, really. And then all the trig identities are, are little logic puzzles. They are almost identical to the types of puzzles in terms of the way your brain wraps around them. To the, you remember those little logic puzzles where you had to figure out the lady in orange dances with the man with glasses, you know, and then you have all these little clues and you have to figure out who dances with whom at the dance. So it's the same sort of process, more or less. It's a logic puzzle, and that's all that we're going to imply. So let me give you your tools. So the first tools, and we're going to add to these over the course of sections. The concept of trig identities is going to come up over and over and over again. So, But first, let's talk about um, just some basic tools. The first is that we know that the tangent of theta is sine theta over cos theta. That's always free of charge. We also know that cotan theta is cos theta over sine theta. Now, please understand, these equal signs implies, even because just because it reads from left to right, doesn't mean that's the only way it can be used. It works like a hammer. One end of the hammer puts the nail in, the other end of the hammer pulls it out. So you get to use it however you want, however is, is most efficient. Okay? Then there's cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta. And then uh, secant of theta is 1 over cos theta. It's supposed to be a theta, by the way, is 1 over cosine of theta. Okay, those are the biggies. Nothing to it. Now, let's talk about the Pythagorean identities. So the Pythagorean, Pythagorean identities, and the first and foremost comes from the two identities. I almost, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what I almost just wrote. <laughs> Remember that everything comes from the unit circle as far as how we first define trigs. We know that this implies because sine is, is y and, and cos is x. We know that this turns into sine squared theta plus cos squared, whoops, plus, whoa, I lost my floating, plus cos squared theta equals, equals 1, okay? Free of charge, it doesn't matter what theta is. This could be sine squared Ripley plus cos squared Ripley. It doesn't matter as long as it's sine squared and cos squared. Now, these are the keepers. I'm going to rewrite that, and I'm going to do something funny. So if I do sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, and I divide everything by sine squared. Watch what happens. Oops, and then sine, get rid of that. And then sine squared. I'm, just, I'm allowed to do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides and I don't divide by zero. And this is sine squared theta, not sine squared zero. Now, those cancel become one, so I end up with one plus, last I checked, cos squared plus sine squared is the same thing as cos theta over sine theta squared, which is effectively known as, by this guy right here, we know that this is cotangent squared theta and then last I checked 1 over sine is the same 1 over sine squared is the same thing as 1 over sine quantity squared so I get cosecant squared theta if I go through exactly the same process only I divide through by cos squared so I go sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1 and I divide everything by cos squared theta and cos squared theta and cos squared theta, well, you can see what happens. Those cancel and become 1. I end up with tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant, whoops, secant squared theta. Those are my Pythagorean identities. All right, let's talk about even odd. Even odd, because these are sometimes very useful. Remember, these are just our tools that we get to work with. All right, I know that sine is odd, therefore sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. That's kind of cool. I know that cos of negative theta, because it's even, equals a positive cos theta. So I'm allowed to absorb negatives on those guys. I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know that uh, cosecant negative theta, because cosecant comes from sine. Remember, cosecant is just 1 over sine, and sine's odd. So this is negative cosecant of theta. And then, let's see, secant of negative theta equals secant of theta for the same reason, only this time it comes from, from cosine. 
<clears throat> and then let's see, I know that tan is sine over cos, so tan was odd, remember that, so this is negative tan of theta, and then uh, what, cotan? Cotan is just 1 over tangent, so 1 over an odd function is still odd, and I get negative cotan of theta. Nothing to it. Those are my tools. Now let's play the game. I'm going to do a couple of, uh, I'm going to launch in on some decent ones just to, to get going. I'm going to do this one. This is actually an example from your book. I'm going to do tangent of x plus cotangent of x over secant of x times cosecant of x. And this equals 1. Now, I launch right into it because we're going to start with some really easy ones and we're going to do a ton of these in class. But So I don't really want to waste your time with super easy ones right off the bat. The trick with this is, is always start with the side that gives you the most information. In other words, it gives you the most uh, tricks, most things that you can do. Well, clearly, if I start with one, I could do a lot with one, but I don't know how I'm going to get from one over here. All right. Now, really what you want to do, you want to get in the habit of committing to one side and sticking with that side. Now, here, watch what I do here. Because this side gives me the most information, I'm going to start with it. Now, to be honest with you, I don't have any idea how I'm going to, it's not like I've got this thing all solved in my head. I don't have any idea how I'm going to prove that this side equals this. I mean, I don't have it all done through. But I do know that, that tangent is sine x over cos x. So when in doubt, do something and see what happens. You'll get your brain wrapped around. I know that cotan of x is sine of x. I know that this is 1 over cos x. I know that this is times 1 over sine x. Okay, now I cannot write from this point hence, I have committed to the left-hand side. I am ignoring the right-hand side. The trick at this point is to make this equal 1. Okay? Now I'm going to pretty this thing up for just a sec, and maybe something special will happen. I'm going to deal with the numerator, uh, so I'm ignoring 1 over cos times 1 over sine, and I'm just dealing with the numerator. Well, last I checked, that's a fraction, and fractions have common denominators, and that common denominator is sine x cos x. You see what I'm talking about? I'm just dealing with the top. I'm not dealing with the bottom at all. So this gives me sine squared x plus cos squared x and then over, and then now, okay, the top is dealt with, and already I'm like, ooh, look at this, this is nice. And on the bottom, I get 1 over sine x cos x. Now, for new students, for students that are new to trig identities, they have a tendency to, to not pause between your steps. Pause between your steps and look at this thing and say, is there anything clever that I can do that will simplify the problem? Remember, you're headed, you want to 9 times out of 10, head in a simpler direction. Well, I see a sine square and a cos square. So I'm going to write 1 over sine x cos x. That's the numerator. And then in the bottom, it's already 1 over sine x cos x. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing because last I checked, anything divided by itself is 1. Now, I suppose I should use, let's use a little bit more um, mathematical notation, and then this equals 1. Guess what? 1, <coughs> excuse me, equals 1. Now I get to show off as a mathematician, and I get to write quid or demonstrata, which means what was meant to be shown. Isn't that fun? Okay? Now, let me do another one. That was nice and simple, right? I mean, it was really a piece of cake. I had to make uh, this was this was a step, this was a step, this was a step. So it was really a three-step identity. Most identities are only three or four steps long. Now, let me do another one for you. This one's really, really instructive, and I'll show you why. Right, 1 minus sine theta over cos theta equals cos theta over 1 plus sine theta. Now, I've been teaching trig identities for a long time, and I will tell you that when I first started teaching this, I, I would, God, you should have seen it, I would brute force this, and believe it or not, this identity can turn into the most god-awful, nasty, horrific identity you've ever seen. <sighs> that said, I have learned, all right, so just bear with me. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit to a side. Now, they both appear to have the same amount of information, right? They're both telling me the same thing. In other words, I got a 1 minus sine theta over cos, and a cos theta 
over 1 plus sine theta. So here's what I'm going to do. Because I read the King's English and I'm more comfortable going from left to right, I'm going to commit to the left-hand side. There's nothing that says I can't commit to the right-hand side and turn it into this guy. But I like the left-hand side. And let me show you why. Watch this. I think you'll like this. I'm going to take 1 minus sine theta over cos theta. Now remember, with identities, I'm trying to show that two things are equal. I'm trying to prove that. I need to make this guy look like this guy. So I've always got one eye on what I need to do. That's really important. You always kind of want to say, okay, at some point, this right here is going to look like this right here. Now, if you can bear that in mind, and you always have that sort of in the back of your, of your brain, they're so easy to solve. Watch. Do you agree that if I'm going to make this, this side right here, look like this, then this side is going to have to gain a 1 plus sine theta in the denominator, right? It doesn't have a 1 plus sine theta in the denominator, but this one does. So watch, I'm going to brute force it. The laws of mathematics say at any point you can add 0 or you can multiply by 1. And we've used this idea before, okay? We're not afraid of it. I'm going to multiply by the god awfulest looking one you've ever seen. 1 plus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta. Now, nobody would begrudge me that I'm allowed to do that. Now, let's see what happens when I multiply. Now, remember, I'm not even, all that I'm using this for is for reference. I'm not going to write equals or do anything crazy at all. But look at what happens. If I multiply 1 minus sine theta times 1 plus sine theta, last I checked, that is a difference of two perfect squares, which is 1 minus sine squared theta. The denominator is cosine of theta times 1 plus sine theta. You've got to be real careful here with your parentheses, okay? Now watch what happens. Notice I just picked up the 1 plus sine theta that I'm going to need. So really the rest of the dance has to do with these terms. I somehow have to turn this chunk into a cos theta. But watch, it's already done for me. 1 minus sine squared theta because sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Can't that be written as cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta? It's an identity, so I'm allowed to move stuff around algebraically. Guess what? Oh, I have cosine squared theta divided by cos theta times 1 plus sine theta, right? Cos squared theta divided by cos theta. One of these cancel, and that guy goes away. And guess what you end up with? cos theta over 1 plus sine theta, q, e, d. Same thing. Isn't that fun? Now that little trick will save you so much frustration. Let's, let's reiterate. I'm going to change colors yet again. I see that I need a 1, if I'm going to turn this guy into this guy, I see that I'm going to need a 1 plus sine theta in the denominator. So I just manufacture it by multiplying through by a goofy looking 1. And then the rest sort of takes care of itself. It's like the quickest little trick that's so useful. All right, we're going to do a boatload of these. We're going to do a thousand of them. Probably not a thousand, but maybe 17. All right? So I will see you tomorrow in class, and I hope you enjoyed the lecture, and have a good day.